we're just sitting here on two very comfortable chairs, very casually, the way we normally would. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to ask a couple questions. We spend most Friday <laughs> afternoons like Yeah, this. you say, will you please come over and sit <laughs> in these incredibly the odd stools yeah. and talk to me in my uh, entryway. I've been told to ask you about entertainment, and I know that for myself and for a lot of people I know, as a kid, it was a dream to get involved in, in the industry. I'm just curious if that was the case for you. It was always a dream of mine to get involved in the business, but my real dream was to be Walter Cronkite. I wanted to be a television journalist. Actually, I wanted to be an anchorman. And so my initial foray or uh, my early jobs in the business were designed for me to ultimately get there. And you were, like a, you were a weatherman for a while, right? Yes, you take what you can get. Wait, <laughs> so what was that? What was that? So like? I wanted to be Walter Cronkite. And yeah. You have to, when you want to be a network anchor, you're taught right away, and I majored in television and radio in, in uh, college, you're taught right away that you have to get a job in a small market on air. And you, you, you know, it's not like you can just write your own ticket. And so I took what I could get, and I was offered a job as a feature news reporter and a weatherman in Ithaca, New York. Now, Ithaca there's is in a part of the world where there's a lot of weather, and most of it isn't good. And so the good news is, in terms of that job, is it taught me how to give people bad news. <laughs> you know? So I did that, uh, and uh, about eight or nine months into uh, my stint as a weatherman, I decided that I was not only not very good at that, but I probably wasn't good enough to fulfill my ultimate dream to be Walter Cronkite. So I, I switched gears a bit right. and uh, decided I'd go uh, pursue a job off camera instead of on camera. Mm. And I got hired by ABC in the summer of 1974, and two years ago. Did, did you start in sports at ABC? No, I was hired a sort of a general assignment, entertainment and news. And I was uh, immediately assigned to work on the Nixon impeachment hearings. President Nixon was being impeached. And then he resigned a few months after that, and I got a, to pick my next assignment. It was a Frank Sinatra concert at Madison Square Garden. It was produced by Jerry Weintraub and Rune Arledge, who was then head of ABC Sports. And that's what led me to sports. Now, but what was entertainment for you? Like, what was a show or a movie that spoke to you that you thought, oh, that's the kind of thing I'd love to be involved in someday. Well, even though I, was, I, I started off being interested in news and I spent 13 years of my career working in television sports, I always was passionate about television and movies. I had favorite TV shows, some that I remember way back to you know, being three, four years old, including, interestingly enough, the Mickey Mouse Club and Davy Crockett. But um, I w had a real passion for television. Now, back in the 50s and 60s, it looked quite a bit different than it looks today. But there was also some really quality television on the air. One, interestingly enough, was Twilight Zone, which came along in the 60s. And the coincidence there is that Rod Serling was an adjunct professor at the college that I went to, Ithaca College. I was going to ask about this. And we'll, we can come back to that. But I love television. And there are a lot of shows that stand out besides uh, Twilight Zone. Sort of post-World War II era, my father was a veteran. There was a show called Combat, for instance, that I adored. A lot of really funny comedies. Leading up, of course, to the, what, an early golden age of comedy in the 60s, thanks to Norman Lear and you know, All in the Family, et cetera, and so on. And MASH, I loved as well. But I also went to the movies often. Uh, and as you'd expect, loved some of the classics of that time, including um, West Side Story would be certainly one that I remember well. Spartacus, David Lean's movies, you know, Bridge Over the River Kwai, I certainly loved. Lawrence of Arabia was a real favorite. My dad loved movies as well, and so he and I frequently went together. I think it probably was 50 cents for a children's ticket to the movies. And so I have a vivid memory of growing up totally enjoying movies and television, yeah. even though I, wasn't, I didn't set out to work in, specifically in the entertainment side of the business right. initially. Are there any movies like the, the, that you wouldn't necessarily want to admit that you love, but that you can't help, like a sort of, you know what I mean? Like, are, are there any movies? Yeah, sure, just... I can remember a movie about Roger Maris and uh, Mickey Mantle and the New York Yankees called Safe at Home. <laughs> and that's your, <laughs> that was fantastic. That's your Desert Island uh, movie? I was a Yankee fan, it probably was 1961 or 1962. Are the other ones? Uh, I wasn't a big B-movie fan. I didn't really, I wasn't big on the Godzillas and the Rodans of the right. day. I love those um, movies. 
You did? I just, I loved them. I thought they were, yeah, uh, they, you they know. Didn't. They were just sort of, you know, crazy escapist entertainment fun, but uh, I mean, they don't, they don't compare the David Lean stuff. But I think I was were, born were, serious, yeah. JJ. I don't know, maybe, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> Do you remember the first movie you saw? Yes, it's uh, again, another great coincidence, but my grandparents took me to see Cinderella, which was I think, a re-release. I was born in 1951, and they took me to see Cinderella at a movie theater in you New York City. You can't write this? Come on, really? Yes, true. That's unbelievable. First movie I ever saw in a movie theater. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. On the stroke of 12, the spell will be broken. Wait, please wait, Heather! One thing I wanted to ask you about was, you mentioned earlier, that The Twilight Zone was your, uh, you know, one of your favorite shows. It was mine as well. Um, you, however, got to have an experience with Rod Serling that yes. I did not. Would you uh, talk about that for a second? Yes, I, I went to Ithaca College, upstate New York, I majored in radio and television. And uh, Rod Serling was from um, a city not far from Ithaca and had a home, a vacation home in Ithaca and he became associated with Ithaca College and became, I guess, the equivalent of visiting or an adjunct professor, but he, he liked the place enough and he liked doing it enough that he came fairly often. And when he came, he taught uh, television writing and directing. And uh, among the things that uh, we did with him uh, were to um, uh, review Twilight Zone scripts with him. <laughs> God. With his notes, <laughs> with his notes, and we discuss the script, and then watch a Twilight Zone with him, and it was amazing. This was in the, the early, early '70s, late '60s, early '70s. So it had been a number of years since he had made those, and he knew every single detail. Are wow. you that way about about things that you've made? Uh, no, some things I am, but not like him. I mean, you know, this this is. Uh, I aspire to do anything like the way he did. I mean, he was such a, a, a genius. But you, you had him for, as a writing teacher. He, did was, you, did a, you he write? was an adjunct or a, or a visiting teacher. But did you so. hand in like, the assignments? No, but we had to read scripts and, give, and tell him what we thought. Oh, really? So it was the equivalent of us giving Rod Serling notes about his Twilight oh, Zone God. scripts. One month ago, the Earth suddenly changed its elliptical orbit, and in doing so, began to follow a path which gradually, moment by moment, day by day, to get closer to the sun. I've worked for some, some incredibly talented people, uh, and they all, they all taught me a lot. I mean, notably, I mentioned Rune Arledge at ABC Sports, who was a genius at uh, live television, uh, and a perfectionist as well, and a real risk taker. And then uh, Tom Murphy and Dan Burke, and Michael Eisner as well. Michael Eisner had a, had a set designer's talent when it came to things like theme parks, where he could look at something and and, and really analyze the picture that he was seeing as to whether it was right or not. And I envisioned Walt Disney doing the same thing. I was fortunate enough to have watched Michael do that on a number of occasions, for instance. So I've been, throughout these 40-some odd years, I've been really lucky to have been taught by some pretty special people. Mm -hmm.